Good morning. My name is Lori Corby, and I am honored to stand in front of you today as the high school principal and to celebrate with the family and friends of the graduating class of 2020. Welcome. I would like to acknowledge the attendance of our administrative team at today's ceremony. Our superintendent of schools, Mr. Eben Bullock. Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Carrie Johnston. Ass Director of Curriculum and Student Improvement, Mr. Antonio Stena. Administrator for Business and Support Services, Mr. Michael Pavlovich. And Elementary School Principal, Mr. Robert Hansen. We also have our school counselor, Mrs. Ms. Jody Gravlin. The President of the Class of 2020, Mr. Glenn Rogers, the salutatorian for the class of 2020, Ms. Kadeja Buck, and the valedictorian of the class of 2020, Ms. Caitlin Brown, who will all help to make our ceremony special today. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice, for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose brush shines Before we begin the graduation ceremony, I would like to take a moment to thank the many people who have helped in the organization of this virtual graduation ceremony during these unprecedented times. It has taken an enormous amount of planning to make not only this event special for the class of 2020, but also the other events we had during the months of May and June. I would like to thank the following people. Our students for demonstrating a tremendous amount of warrior pride, patience, respect, integrity, determination, and excellence. Graduates, you have had so many things unknown and thrown at you over these past 10 plus weeks. Things haven't been normal due to the circumstances beyond any of our control, but each and every time we see you, whether virtually or we saw you in person, I am happy to say that you have adapted. The saying that when life gives you lemons, make lemonade is something that keeps coming to my mind. Parents, thank you for your continued support of the Sydney Central School District. SNS Landscaping for the beautiful flowers. Maintenance, custodians, and transportation center employees for transforming the transportation center from the bus garage to what you see today. Mr. St Scott Herzog, the senior class advisor. Mrs. Julia Alfizer, the National Honor Society advisor. Ms. Jody Gravlin, counselor for grades 10 through 12. All of our faculty, staff, and administration in attendance today. Board of Education members, who include Ms. Carrie Green, Ms. Marissa Orzoli, Ms. Nancy Parsons, Ms. Amanda Finch, Mr. Tom Hoskins, Mr. Corbin Curley, and Mr. Dan Owens, for your continued support. Mrs. Jackie Cowan, for the development of the programs, 
ordering the caps and gowns, and other numerous behind the scene responsibilities that makes this such a remarkable ceremony. And Miss Maggie McNamara, who helped to organize lots of things and who will officially be the Sydney Junior Senior High Assistant Principal beginning in the 2020-2021 school year. Now, we'll begin the student recognition portion of our ceremony. Thank you all for joining us on this special occasion to celebrate the accomplishments of these ladies and gentlemen. All of these students have put forth a tremendous amount of effort to earn the privilege to sit and graduate today. As you may have noticed, there are students wearing additional symbolic items on their cap and gown. Each item signifies that additional academic effort was put forth by each of these students. Gold tassels. These represent honor graduates with a 90 cumulative average or above. Gold medallion represents the seal of biliteracy, which testifies to a student's pursuit of proficiency in English and another world language. Gold stoles and gold cords represent National Honor Society members. Gray stoles represent National Vocational Technical Honor Society members. Pink cords represent Tri-M National Honor Society members. And superintendent medals. These represent students that have excelled academically and have been actively involved in our school community. Congratulations to these students on their accomplishments and thank you for your dedication and hard work in achieving academic excellence. Please join me now in the welcoming of our first student speaker this morning, the salutatorian of the class of 2020, Ms. Khadijah Bob. Welcome guests, administration, staff, and graduates. Thank you for joining us virtually for the graduation of the class of 2020. I know we all thought this would a lot different, but hopefully we can use our experiences in quarantine as a lesson for the future. We, as the class of 2020, are stronger than we thought we were, facing this pandemic, loaded classwork, and countless reminders of our failure of the senior year. With that being said, I'd like to thank the teachers, school staff, and our class as why I stand in front of you as a graduate and student. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and for everyone to be a part of this journey. Thank you to the families and friends of our graduates for molding our class into the people they are today. I only hope that you continue to support them in their endeavors to reach their goals. As for our graduates, thank you for staying with us through these circumstances. It's hard, but it's only made us better than who we were before. Like I said before, I know we expected this year to go a little different. We held a lot of expectations for the perfect senior year for the perfect graduating class of 2020. Despite this, quarantine held many lessons that we may need for the future. Time management, the importance of socializing, self-love, and gratitude are all important things we have conquered or are in the way of fulfilling. For our college years, it will be crucial to use what we've learned for the past couple of months in order to evolve into better people. Musical artist Christopher Baum once said, It's time I graduate. Illuminate the world with my light. Is graduation a finish line or another gunshot that goes off to mark the start of a new journey? We've grown into kids playing with Legos, silly bands, and webkins, to young adults able to make our own decisions, ready to brave the world. Graduating high school is the end of one era and the beginning of another. Using what we've learned during our school years, I hope that we strive to become better people for everyone around us and ourselves. I hope through the years, we don't forget our friends, experiences, and memories from high school. As mixed as our feelings may be, Sydney had a huge impact on who we are now, and we can only grow to become better from here. I know the speech is short, but I'd like to end on one last thing. One of the many things I value most is happiness. One must be proud in what you pursue, whether it be medicine, business, education, law enforcement, music, etc. I wish everyone the best in the future, and I only hope for the best for all of you. Thank you for being a part of this journey, no matter how small the impact. Thank you. Thank you, Khadija. I would like to now turn the graduation ceremony over to our school board president, Mrs. Carrie Green. 
Good morning and welcome to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. I would like to read a letter submitted by the Sydney Central School Alumni Association address to the 2020 Sydney Central High School graduates. On behalf of the Sydney Central School Alumni Association, I would like to take this opportunity to be the first to welcome you as the newest Sydney Central School alumni. The Sydney Central School Alumni Association was created for the purpose of forming a lasting bond between alumni, school, and community. To keep you in touch, the Alumni Association publishes a semi-annual newspaper, Reflections, provides a website at www.sydneyalumni.org, and hosts an annual Alumni Weekend every July. We cordially invite you to become a member of the Alumni Association and to register on the Alumni website. Again, our congratulations and our best wishes in your future endeavors. Hope to see you soon as a fellow alumnus. Sincerely, the Sydney Alumni Association. Thank you, Board President Jerry Green. As superintendent of schools, I hereby exercise the authority to award honorary diplomas for the Sydney Central School District to our retirees in recognition of their contribution to the students and community of the Sydney Central School District. At this time, I would like to present the following retirees with honorary diplomas. Mr. Dwayne Langstaff. Dwayne has been a member of the Buildings and Grounds Department for over 34 years. Ms. Kathy Wilbur. Kathy has been a member of our instructional support staff for over 33 years. Congratulations to both of you. Now, please help me in providing a well-earned welcome for the valedictorian of the class of 2020, Miss Caitlin Brown. Good afternoon, class of 2020. Before I commence my speech, I'd like to thank all the staff, administrators, friends, and family members that made this possible. I think I speak for the entirety of the class that I say, this isn't what we expected for our senior year. However, it's far better than the alternative of no graduation at all. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna sugarcoat reality and tell you everything is okay. We as seniors have worked relentlessly for the past 13 years to have a graduation with our friends and family, and teachers and classmates, just so they could see us walk across the stage and finally be congratulated on all of our efforts. We as seniors have had a valuable moment of our lives stolen from us by something that we could have never predicted. We planned college visits, we went shopping for prom, we made plans for graduation parties and gatherings, and in a matter of weeks, each in a matter of weeks, each and every one of those things were taken from us. This is a sad reality that we live in. As we transition to adulthood one by one, we will all come to realize that moments like these are going to happen. And it will never be something that we can control. That being said, this has given us a strength that we never knew we would be able to have. This is a strength that no other graduating class has had the opportunity to achieve. Most of our lives we have been guided, we have been taught right from wrong, and we, has, we have always had someone there to pick us up and brush us off when we fall down. But in March of 2020, things changed. We were shoved into reality. I'm sure most of you had the same initial thoughts I did. This is great, a few weeks off of school, I can take a break, I, I can relax a little more, and then I can go back in April and finish my senior year. But little did we know, this wasn't how it was going to end. All of a sudden, we had to transition to online school, doing Zoom meetings, teaching ourselves with textbooks and videos. That by far has been the hardest part of my educational career. I now have a deep sympathy for all those that are teachers, as well as going into the education field. You are truly amazing people, as it takes a special set of skills to be able to do what you do. I'm sure all of us have struggled with that extreme of an adjustment. However, this has strengthened us, like I said. This pandemic has taught us to be mature young adults in the most difficult of times. Over the past few months, reality has struck for many of us, harder for some than others. This reality has ha had one overlying theme, that we are all alone. I know that sounds very harsh and pessimistic, but I ask that you listen with an open mind as I think you'll appreciate this someday later in life. In kindergarten, we all sat around at small tables in the colorful classrooms, eating goldfish, laughing with our classmates instead of paying attention to the teacher. At elementary school assemblies, we had our teachers and administrators sitting beside us and standing in front of the gym, waiting to smile and shake their little hands for getting student of the month. 
Throughout our high school years, we had our parents waiting there for us to hug us and pat us on the back after a game or coming off the stage from an award ceremony. And for our senior year, we sat alone at our dining room tables, at our desks in our rooms, or simply on our beds because our sleep schedules had been so messed up. For the first time in our lives, we have experienced what it's like to be alone in the most textbook definition of the word. We are officially adults now. Even if you're not 18 yet, or if you plan on living with your parents still, you are an adult. To some of you, this is what you've been looking forward to for many years. For others, it's your worst nightmare. No matter what your outlook on life is, you need to realize that this is a new chapter in your life. And the pen is in your hand. The people around you have their own books to write, and they won't always be there. The people around you can help you with developing your future, but you have to realize when it's all said and done, you are the one in control. You need to learn and decide what is best for you with every ounce of willpower being poured into what you want to do and getting where you want to be. Don't rely on other people to get you where you're going. Appreciate all the love and support that you are given by those around you, but don't lean on it. Because someday it could fade away and you may fall and there will be no one there to hold you up. Now I'm not talking about superficial things. We all know some of us will be calling our parents after going off to college, asking questions about finances or money or job interviews or how to cook something or maybe even just how to start the washing machine. It's okay to rely on your friends and families for those things, but you should be the one making the big picture decisions. As the wise Michael Scott once said, sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. We're not always going to be able to see the future or every possible thing that's going to go wrong or right in life. But the important thing is that you lay down a foundation of success for yourself. Things aren't always going to be easy, but you'll eventually find your way. The decision is in your hands, so I ask you, what do you want your future to look like? Thank you, Caitlin. At this time, two family members of each graduate will present the students of the class of 2020 with their diplomas. Following each student's name, Ms. Jody Gravlin, school counselor, will be announcing each student's post-graduation plans. Adrian Paul Anderson, United States Marine Corps. Sunny Buffalo. Jordan Lee Ashby, United States Army. <laughs> Molly K. Babcock, SUNY Portland.
Abby Frances Barnes entering the workforce. Binghamton University.
Khadija Aliana Cheesebro, entering the workforce. Marissa Elizabeth Church, University of Tampa. <laughs> Sydney Javon Klepper, Monroe Community College. Corbin James Constable, United States Navy. Entering the workforce. Renee Marie Finch, 
Suni Kobolskill. Madison Elizabeth French, SUNY Delhi. Sony Del High.
James Edward Green, entering the workforce. Natasha Kohler. 
Larson, SUNY Broom. Caitlin Marquez, SUNY Fredonia. Allison Rose Marshall, entering the workforce. Liam Scott Matthews, Cornell University. Samantha Kelly Matzel, SUNY Empire State. Jonathan Tyler Michaels, entering the workforce. Marie Nichols, entering the workforce. Kaya Shay Norbert, Sony Broom. Derek Allen Northrup, NASCAR Technical Institute. <laughs> Laurel Felix Obiata, SUNY Broom. Jonathan 
James Palmatier entering the workforce. Michaela Leslie Phillips, Wells College. Lindsay Elizabeth Pierce, Rochester Institute of Technology. <laughs> Georgia Kirsten Ropes, entering the workforce. Amber Marie Rogers, Jenny Broom. <laughs> Glenn Bryce Rogers, Sunny Broom. Elizabeth Taylor Ruling, entering the workforce. James Ryder Jr. entering the workforce. Danielle Joyce Sack, Paul Mitchell School. Parker Andrew Sklenaric, undecided. Dylan Chad Smith, SUNY Broom.
Bailey Jane Smith, SUNY Cortland. United States Army. <laughs> Brian Andrew Wells, Clarkson University. Daniel Zahi, entering the workforce. I would now like to present the Sydney Class of 2020 to Mr. Evan Bullock, Superintendent of Schools. Mr. Bullock, I present to you these students who have successfully fulfilled all graduation requirements set forth by the Sydney Central School Board of Education and the State of New York. By the power vested in me as superintendent of schools, by the state of New York and the New York State Board of Regents, I hereby accept the recommendations of the high school principal that the students presented as candidates for graduation have met the requirements for graduation set forth by the state of New York and officially confer upon them the honor of graduate from the Sydney Central School District. Let's congratulate the Sydney Central School District graduating class of 2020. At this time, please welcome Mr. Glenn Rogers, the president of the class of 2020, to share his reflection. Hello, 
And thank you for everyone who is making this time of difficulty more relieving and charitable. I am here among you all, whether it be via the internet or in person, because the majority of my classmates voted me to be their president. Not because of good grades and determination to be the best student, but because you all thought I could represent you fairly well. As confusing as this is, I have always been honored and grateful to represent you all with my hardworking counsel and advisors. As we begin our journeys, whether it be the workforce, military, or further education, I want to discuss the unique and extraordinary group of seniors that are graduating this year. From the beginning, it was always unfair. Since it was Mrs. Graham and Mrs. Starkey against other kindergarten classes, Mrs. Owens and Mrs. West class would always lose in any competition. Cleaning up the room, naps, coloring, you name it, the other class won it. And obviously it helped out the two marvelous students, Khadija Butt, the salutatorian, and Caitlin Brown, the valedictorian. Eventually, we moved from coloring and napping to a horrible environment where we had to learn actual information for the next year. The teachers also had us doing state exams in the third grade. Oh, but let me tell you, fourth grade, we learned so many songs. Shout out to Miss Dewey for the precipitation song, classic. And the complex system of cool cash started, which is probably the reason why I afford the money my parents give to me today. Also, when the school made us walk to the bowling alley, what was up with that? And as elementary years of recess and actual fun declined, we all began to change and transition into middle schoolers, the worst part of school. Middle school was very weird, I think we all can agree. Our bodies were changing along with our curriculum, which contained ancient Mesopotamia. I still don't know what to do with ancient Mesopotamia today. Or, when we got even more cool cash, and at that point we were so good at the system, we all started using cool cash to pay other people to do our homework. Or at least that's what I did. The most relatable event with the class in middle school is the fact that barely anyone actually read for the reading logs. But the ultimate best part was agreeably the two weeks of field trips we had due to maintenance reasons I'm not allowed to disclose. Then we got upstairs, but there was no AC. But we all got through it with Yurka trying to teach a bunch of preteens health-related lessons. Then we had yet again transition to the final phase of school, high school. This place is where we developed our foundation of who we are. This is where Mr. Worsnop taught some of us Spanish, or where Miss Jacobus was yelling some weird word we didn't understand and sticking her finger in our mouth whenever we yawned. Or perhaps where Mr. O and Mr. Townsend would persuade which type of science is better. Despite what path you took in high school, you have some amazing memories with very charismatic individuals. You have prospered into young adults now ready to take on life. Some memories involve friends that will remain for quite some time, like the lovely folks that filled the Jeep of Bailey Jones, or the group of friends that shout hilarious jokes at each other about Nick Cavell's car. No matter what differences in high school experiences we all had, we all did it together. We all grew up and saw the development of each and every one of us. And for that, I say thank you for this journey with me. I hope I have half the impact that every single one of you has had on me. And lastly, because I totally understand, I talk a lot, I would like to take the time to say a few small things. Seniors, I ask you, wherever you are right now, take the time to appreciate those who have got you where you are. I get it, it's cliche, it's cliche for a reason. Mr. Bullock, Mr. Herzog, the trio, wherever you are, and anyone else who has helped me, inclusive to administrators, all staff, friends and family, Thank you for everything you've done for me. I would like to thank especially my two parents, June Rogers and Warren Rogers. You two have motivated me through all of it. Thank you. And finally, I would like to conclude the only way Cowboy Glenn Rogers knows how to. Life is a garden, dig it. Joe Dirt, thank you all. Thank you, Glenn. As we conclude our ceremony today, I would like to say to our graduating class of 2020, my wish from the song with the same title by Rascal Flats. I hope the days come easy and the moments pass slow, and each road leads you to where you want to go. 
And if you're faced with a choice and you have to choose, I hope you choose the one that means the most to you. And if one door opens to another door closed, I hope you keep on walking till you find the window. If it's cold outside, show the world the warmth of your smile. But more than anything, more than anything, my wish for you is that this life becomes all that you want it to. Your dreams stay big, your worries stay small. You never need to carry more than you can hold. And while you're out there getting where you're going to, I hope you know somebody loves you and wants the same things too. Yes, this is my wish.